is a very difficult problem, climate change. It's going to affect all of us over decades. And in your lifetime, you're going to see significant changes. Sea levels, uh, pattern of storms, temperatures, um, rainfall, drought. Uh, it's not a problem which we can solve in Singapore by ourselves. Even if we all stop breathing in Singapore, it is not going to make a difference because you look at the scale in China and in India, billions of people, and that's what's going to determine what happens in the world. But all the countries have to come together and try to make some difference to at least mitigate this problem, make it less severe, put off the changes, slow down, so we have time to adapt and uh, to, to make adjustments to live in this new environment. And as other countries do measures to cut down their emissions, uh, we have to do some ourselves. It's going to be uh, impacting your lifestyles. Uh, maybe you have to turn, you'll have to turn up the aircon a bit warmer. Maybe you'll have to take a bus instead of a car. Maybe you will have to have uh, in your households fewer, fewer electronic gadgets. But these are adjustments which we have to make and which I think with some ingenuity and some uh, perseverance, uh, we can make these adjustments and uh, fulfill our international obligations and at the same time uh, give some help to the environment. Um, we realize that you mentioned that um, Singapore has indicated it will reduce its carbon emission growth by 16 percent by 2020, um, according to business as usual levels. Compared to business as usual levels, yeah. yeah. Depending on whether um, a legally binding global deal is present at yes. the end of it. Yes. However, we notice that um, this cut is not based on the usual base le base years of 1990 or 2005 that mm. other countries usually use, and um, which implies that there is no peak of our emissions in the coming few years. Does this mean that we are expected that, that we expect to have continuous increase in our absolute carbon emissions by 2020? Uh, well, until 2020, this is what we have committed. That okay. we, if it were business as usual, I think we would have had a substantial increase in our emissions because the economy is growing. We are bringing in new investments, new projects, and they will uh, generate a carbon footprint. So we think what we can do through range of policies is to reduce this increase by 16 percent, which is a significant mm -hmm. amount compared to where we are starting. I think either we're starting this year or the year before. 1990 is a baseline which applies to the Annex 1 countries, you know, Kyoto Protocol. Mm -hmm. Annex 1 countries, their measurements are all from 1990. And they are also committed to having absolute reductions from this starting point which in fact most of them have not been able to meet because it's just, even the Europeans have not found it easy to do. Uh, we are not Annex 1, so we are not obliged to do that. Um, what we are doing is what we think is possible. Um, can we peak? Maybe at some point we can think about it, but as of now, I don't think it's easy for us to commit because we have very few alternatives to fossil fuel which we can turn to. Mm -hmm. Here you see the windmills going. Yes. We can't do that in Singapore. We don't have enough wind. Here you go out, the wind is blasting away. That's energy for free, but you don't have that in Singapore. You don't have nuclear very easily. So if we say we cut back on the carbon footprint, that means you're cutting back on your energy consumption and to a very large extent that will mean you're <coughs> cutting back on your economic growth or it may even mean economic shrinkage because if you don't have the ener energy you just can't grow and we don't think with that we can accept that. Right, come 2020 the position may be different, the technology may have changed, the urgency of the problem may be greater we may have other alternatives, or there might be some other global deal which is possible. Then we think again, but for now, I think we are not able to commit. But there will be continued research into alternative yes. energy yes. in Singapore. Yeah. We're, well, we are doing a little bit because we have an initiative on um, 
clean energy, which is mainly focused on solar panels, uh, photovoltaic cells. But the other countries will also be doing energy um, research into alternative sources of energy. So as they make progress, which we hope they will, uh, then we will be able to apply it in Singapore too, and that, will, that we hope will give us alternatives. But I think it will be a slow process. It's not the sort of thing which you can do overnight on a very big scale. Even to build an ordinary power station may take you five, six years from the moment you decide you need it. You find the site, you plan, you build, you commission, you bring it into operation progressively. <coughs> it's a long process, and to do it with a new energy, new technology, alternative source, and a technology really not quite fully invented yet, it, I think it will take you a lot more than five or six years. So, even with the best intentions, I don't think this is going to happen very, very quickly. I think we have to consider all those possibilities. If you are going to reduce from business as usual, you have to do a lot of things. Uh, you have to, for example, insulate the buildings better so the air conditioning works better with less energy consumed. You have to shift from private transport cars to public transport. Uh, I think home usage of electricity will have to change because homes are using more and more power now. You have a fish tank, you have a pump to go to the fish tank. You have air cons, you have big screen, flat screen. All that takes a lot of energy. And I think to some extent you can do that by planning and by rules. You know, you require your air con to be more energy efficient. Or you build more MRT lines, so you require buildings to be green mark qualified. But at the same time, you have to have the right incentives. At the end of the day, electricity has to be priced properly. And that means you need some kind of a price on, a tax on uh, consumption of energy, for like a carbon tax. But we have to think how we want to do that. And if you do that, it will mean costs on businesses and on households. Then you have to think how you are going to offset that so that I, if you are a low-income family, well, you have options, but at the same time, uh, you are encouraged to economize and to reduce your carbon footprint. So these are things we have to consider. We cannot rule out anything, but we haven't decided yet. And it depends what the other countries do, because the more the other countries do, uh, the more we are, I think, obliged to match. Okay. And if they're not doing, but we do something very stringent on ourselves, we may kill ourselves. Because then the industry will say, why, why do I want to stay here? I go across to Malaysia or Indonesia or Thailand, it's easier. And it doesn't make sense because we'll hurt ourselves. But industries go elsewhere, it doesn't mean it saves the world, maybe worse. If we market ourselves as the pioneers in the region, yeah. wouldn't that attract the investors? Um, investors to build a Energy saving technology, yes, but investors using the expensive energy may not come because if you look at some of the industries like petrochemicals that has a big footprint or even wafer fabs, semiconductors, that uses a lot of electricity and a lot of clean water. So if you make it, if we have very high carbon taxes, uh, it will tend to drive them away rather than rather than attract them to Singapore. Unless everywhere they go they have the same tax, then they have no choice, you see. Then it's even. But if other countries don't have the same, I think it's difficult.